Hey, this is Dino, and I want to show you how to set up an API proxy in Apigee X that verifies an Auth2 access token. So before we get into that, I'm going to look at the um, Auth2 specification, IETF RFC 6749. It dis it's a little bit old at this point, but it's current. Um, and it describes how to get uh, and, and uh, request OAuth tokens. So we're going to be focusing on, for this purpose, um, the client credentials grant type, which is the simplest one. This is kind of what it looks like. Post to token, encode the client credentials in a basic auth header, uh, use a form URL encoded body with a single parameter called grant type with a fixed value called client credentials. So we want Apigee to satisfy that kind of uh, request um, to get a token. So, um, and then we're going to use that token that we get in response uh, in an API request and have Apigee verify it. So to get started, let's navigate over to console.cloud.google.com. You need to have um, logged in and you need to have your Apigee already set up. I'm not covering how to set up Apigee. This is uh, after you've done that. Navigate on the left-hand side to the API proxies list and then click Create. There's a number of different ways you can create an API proxy. Um, the most common is a reverse proxy. That's the case where a client's going to send in a request to Apigee, and Apigee's going to invoke some upstream system. We're not doing that. Just for the purpose of this demonstration, we want a no-target API proxy, so we'll select that. And we're going to call that loopback-1. That's going to give us a base path, and we're going to create that. Now we've got an API proxy. We want to tell it what to do when it receives requests. So click the Develop tab, select the default proxy endpoint, and pull this down a little bit. Uh, we're going to add a conditional flow. Flow 1, that'll be path and verb slash t1. And then uh, we're going to add another flow, which is we're going to call the unknown request flow. This is going to be for anything that's not get slash t1. I'm going to put in a sort of a contrived uh, verb and path there, but that's not really the one that I want to use. So this is what I've got by um, adding those two flows. This one, I want to remove this condition. Why? Um, I want this flow to execute when a get for t1 arrives at Apigee, and I want this flow to execute in all other cases. So it's kind of a catch-all. Now, what will we do in each of these flows? In the unknown request, let's do that in the um, request section on the left-hand side here. Um, let's click plus, and we're going to say we want to raise a fault when um, somebody, when a caller sends in a request that, uh, that doesn't match our, our prior pattern. So let's set that up. And that's going to give me an, a raise fault policy. I want to doctor that up a little bit, change that. Um, this is going to be unknown request, a plain text response. And the status code will be 404. 404. Um, I don't really need to keep the reason phrase in there. Apogee will set that automatically. Everything else looks good. Um, so we can save that. That is the, what's going to happen in the case of an unknown request. But now, what I'd like to do is, in the response that's on the right-hand side, for that flow that we do want to match, uh, I'm going to send back an, a, a, um, a contrived or canned response. So we'll use assigned message. Canned response is the name I'll use. Um, paste that in. Now I have a... Um, an assigned message policy, and I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to modify that. I don't need any of this stuff, um, the display name or the copy. I do want to remove the headers. Apigee, by default, in a loopback proxy, will um, copy the inbound request headers to the outbound response, and we don't really want that, so we're going to remove the headers. Uh, we're going to tell Apigee, don't, don't send back those request headers. Then I want to set uh, maybe I'm going to set a header here. Um, so that'll be header name equals API proxy. I don't want that 
stray slash, and this is important to get the case right. The header name will be API proxy. This is going to be a response header, and we're going to use a message template. So API proxy dot name is a context variable that Apogee will set. API proxy dot revision is another context variable, um, and you can imagine what's going to happen here. In the response, we're going to see the um, the name and revision of the proxy in that response header. So that's one thing we're going to set. We'll close out the headers element. And then I want to set the payload too. So we'll do that. Capital payload content type uh, will be, uh, let's make a text slash plain. Keep it simple. And this will just be hello world. This is also a message template, so I can put something like message ID. That's another well-known uh, variable that Apogee will set while it's handling the, um, the request. So we are good there. Um, that's really all I need. I want to remove headers, set the payload, set a header. Um, and that is my assigned message. So I'm going to save that and just review what we have in the proxy endpoint. In the case of an unknown request, we get a fault. In the case of a request for get slash T1, uh, we're going to get that canned response. Let's deploy it. That will take 60 seconds. So we've got to be a little bit patient while that happens. OK, that's done. Um, now let's hop over to my Postman client. So I've got a collection with some requests in there defined in Postman. This one is going to match the, the request that I just defined in Apigee. It's refer referencing a variable, a Postman variable here, which is really the, the scheme and host name for my Apigee X environment. So I can send that in. And what I get back is that um, that hello world with the message ID replaced. If I send this um, multiple different times, you'll see that that number change. You'll see it, you know, get altered. Um, likewise, I can look at the, the headers in the response, and you'll see I've got my API proxy header, and it's um, naming loopback and revision one as the value. All right, so we are using Postman, and we've successfully connected to an Apigee API proxy. That's great. Now, the next thing we want to do is set in the, um, the token verification. So what I would like to do is modify flow1 to insert a uh, token verification. So that's going to be the OAuth token policy. And we're going to call this verify access token. I like to use descriptive names for my policies just because as these things get a little more complicated, um, it's helpful to have a name on there that makes sense. I'm going to click into the policy. This one is super simple when we want to do just basic verification. I don't need any of those lines. I just need that operation element uh, to say verify access token. And that's uh, what Apigee is going to do. Um, so let's save that. It's going to say, hey, do you want a new revision? Um, since I deployed the proxy previously, it's got to be a new revision when I save it. Uh, let's review. That verification of the access token only happens for flow one. For the unknown flows, uh, we don't bother verifying an access token. We just know you've made a wrong request, so I'm not even going to bother trying to verify your, your, um, your credentials. So if the token verification succeeds, then flow will proceed to the response steps defined for that conditional flow, and that'll be the canned response. All right, so again, let us deploy that, and this will take 60 seconds. Okay, that's done. Uh, let's go back over to Postman. We'll run this request again. First, let me clear the response. We'll run the same request again. And you should see a 401 author, unauthorized response. And Apogee saying, hey, that's not a valid access token. That's because we didn't send one. Uh, we don't have one. If we did have one, we would put it in the, um, the authorization header, and it would have a bearer prefix and then the actual token value. I don't even have a token. So um, this is the expected response from Apogee. So how do we get a token? Let's flip back over to the other tab. Um, I have a pre-built API proxy. Uh, the URL will be in the notes for this video. Um, but this is, this is something that we can just kind of import into our Apigee environment, and we'll get a um, uh, token dispensing proxy that uses the client credentials grant type. So navigate to this asset, 
API proxy auth to CC no readme, um, and we're going to look at the um, we're, we're going to download that to our local machine. All right, now we're going to flip back to uh, the API proxies tab. Again, navigate to that uh, left hand side, create. Instead of specifying a bunch of things, we're going to say upload a proxy bundle. We're going to call this OAuth auth to CC and browse for that thing we just downloaded. And um, and next, and we actually do want to deploy this uh, because um, that's going to allow us to get the, the token. So we may as well just deploy that. But while that's being deployed, let me give you a little tour of what it's doing. Uh, the most important thing, I guess, is here. It is the generate access token operation with that OAuth2 policy. And it just generates a token with a specific lifetime for the specific um, client that sends in its credentials. So a token dispensing endpoint is a loopback proxy in Apigee. Um, and we're going to use the token that it dispenses for that other loopback proxy. All right, so let's uh, wait a bit while this gets deployed. Actually, while we're waiting, we need to um, we need some other assets in order to support uh, dispensing a token. We need a developer app, which means we need a developer and an API product. So let's start with API products. We'll navigate to API products and we'll create one. We're going to call this Loopback 2024 October 14. That's our product name. Um, we're going to say that's going to be available in the eval, going to be public. Uh, we'll scroll down a little bit and add an operation. This is basically going to be what is available for the, um, what does this API product authorize? And um, we're going to say slash star star for the path, and then we'll just add in the get method. The API product authorization check is, um, it composes with the checks that you may include in an API proxy on those conditional flows. So the API prox product and proxy must, both of those sets of checks must pass in order for the, um, for the request to be, uh, to get a successful response. So we've got loopback proxy slash star star and the get method. We're going to save that. That's our operation. That's what it should look like. And then um, we're going to click Save to make sure we've created that API product. Next thing we need is an app and a developer that owns the app. So first, let's create a developer. October, we'll call the developer October uh, developer. And odev at example.com will be the developer's email doesn't have to be real. Uh, now we've got a developer, and the last thing we need is an app registered for that developer uh, on the API product. Now, normally this is an exercise that the developer themselves is going to go through using a, an API catalog or portal. Um, but you can also do it as an administrator, and that's the kind of journey that I'm showing you here. So we'll call it Loopback App 2024 October 14. Um, that is also the display name. The developer will be that October developer that I just created. Uh, the next thing I want to do is add a credential. We can set an expiry. Let's say, oh, I don't know, 120 days. Uh, not everybody needs an expiring credential, but if you want that, Apigee can allow you to do that. Uh, next thing we'll do is select the product. That's the loopback product. and We'll make sure it's approved. So I've added in that credential, but we're not done yet. I do have to click this Create button to create the app. And what I'm going to get when I've created the app is a key and secret, or a client ID and client secret. Uh, this then will be usable in this kind of request in order to get a token. 
So by by now, we probably have that API proxy um, that um, dispenses tokens. It's probably deployed and ready. So what I need to do is copy this um, client ID, uh, and I'm going to make a new request for um, a token. I'll paste that in there. And um, also copy the client secret, flip back over to Postman, and paste that in there. This is for the, um, the request for token. So that's going to be a post to the token endpoint. And where I got to this was I selected authorization, selected basic auth, and then that allows me to specify what they call the username and password, but that is for client credentials. That, that's going to be the client ID and the client secret. Um, and I'm using my same Apogee endpoint because I've deployed that API proxy. And you can see by passing in the client ID and the client secret in this way encoded, I get a token back. I get a, an access token, an auth to access token generated by Apogee. And it tells me uh, when it was issued and um, how long it, it, it will live. If I run this again, uh, you'll see this token value will change. I can get additional tokens. All right, so let's now grab that token. And again, if we, if we make this request without a token, um, we get an invalid access token uh, response. If I make the request with the authorization header, authorization, uh, bearer prefix, and then paste in that token, and then send it, what do you think is going to happen? We get the, the request flows through. That is exactly what we would expect, and that's Apogee verifying an access token. Uh, if you'd like to see the actual um, trace of that, that may be something you want to do, click back over to your loopback proxy. It's already deployed. Click the debug tab, start a debug session. That takes just a few seconds. Flip back over to Postman and send in that request. And you should see, you, you can send multiple. Uh, but when you flip back over to your... Um, your debug task, you sh or your debug tab, you should see the tra one or more of the transactions that you sent and a trace of what actually happened. So you can see that the verify access token uh, policy executed and the um, assigned message policy uh, set in that hello world can response. Okay, so that shows you how to set up an API proxy in Apogee X that verifies an OAuth2 access token. It also shows you how to set up AppGX to dispense an OAuth2 access token using the client credentials grant with a kind of boilerplate client credentials proxy that we imported. You also saw the concept of the API product and how you can set operations in there, um, and the app and developer and how the app holds credentials and those credentials relate um, uh, to an API product, which authorizes the request on different API proxies. So I hope this all has been helpful. This has been a kind of a reprise of a video I did a little while ago um, using the older version of the Apogee UI. Now we just did it with the newer version of the UI, so I hope this has been helpful. Um, still works the same way. Uh, let me know if you've got any questions.